Um, this slide depicts, um, as background, genetic expression at the beta globin locus over time. So on the left is, um, during fetal life, high levels of gamma globin are expressed. And when combined with alpha globin, they form fetal hemoglobin, or hemoglobin F, which is a healthy, non-sickling type of hemoglobin. However, after birth, a natural switch occurs, shifting expression from gamma globin to beta globin, which is where problems begin for sickle cell patients, because the mutation that causes sickle cell disease is located in the beta globin gene. Instead of making normal adult beta globin, these patients make hemoglobin S, or sickle hemoglobin, which causes all of the downstream complications in sickle cell disease. Our therapeutic goal is to use gene therapy to provide a set of genetic instructions to the red blood cell precursors to flip the switch back to producing high levels of fetal hemoglobin and low levels of sickle hemoglobin. But how is this switch controlled? About a decade ago, Stuart Orkin and Vijay Sankaran and others described BCL11A as a strong repressor of fetal hemoglobin. So our approach is to knock down BCL11A via RNA interference to induce gamma globin expression. A potential advantage of this approach over the gene addition strategy of gene therapy is that we can harness the physiologic switch machinery that exists in the cell to simultaneously increase fetal hemoglobin and decrease sickle hemoglobin. To achieve that goal, um, David Williams and Christian Brendel and others designed a lentiviral vector that contains an shRNA that targets and decreases expression of BCL11A. Um, <clears throat> importantly, uh, this vector contains a novel construct in which the shRNA is embedded within an endogenous microRNA structure. We call this combination structure a schmear vector. And the purpose of that structure is to allow the vector to be expressed only in the red blood cell lineage and to avoid off-target toxicity that would occur if we decreased expression of BCL11A in other cell types, such as B cells or hematopoietic stem cells. This schmear BCL11A vector is what we're testing in our clinical study. Um, the first step for patients in our study is to have hematopoietic stem cells, or HSCs, collected via peripheral stem cell mobilization using plerixophore as a stem cell mobilizing agent. The cells are then transferred to a cell processing facility where blood stem cells are selected, transduced with our BCL11A vector, and cryopreserved. When the, um, when the product undergoes testing and uh, meets all release criteria, the patient is admitted to the transplant unit to receive myeloablative conditioning with busulfan before infusion of the gene-modified cells. Um, during follow-up, which is on this study for two years and then a long-term follow-up, patients are followed closely for safety outcomes and also for um, lab outcomes including BCL11A levels, fetal hemoglobin levels, and of course any sign of sickle cell symptoms. Our study is a single center pilot and feasibility study with a total of seven enrolled patients planned. Um, we are enrolling patients in three staggered age cohorts, starting with adults before moving on to younger patients. So far, we have four subjects enrolled. All four of those subjects have undergone peripheral stem cell mobilization and apheresis. Um, manufacturing has completed in three of the of the patients, and the fourth is well underway. Um, and we have um, treated one patient by infusing gene-modified cells with a follow-up of over six months. Characteristics of the manufactured menacidyl products are shown here. Um, the vector copy number, or VCN, ranges from 3.3 to 5 copies per cell, which suggests excellent transduction efficiency. The cell dose in CD34 cells um, times 10 to the 6 per kilo ranges from 3.3 to 6.7 in these products. And in all of the products, over 95% of the cells are transduced. Um, subject BCL002, whose product is described in the middle column, was infused in May 2018. The autologous transplant course for this patient was uncomplicated. Neutrophil engraftment occurred on day 22. Adverse events were all consistent with myeloablative conditioning, and no adverse events were associated with the medicinal product. On the left shows types of hemoglobin over time in this subject. 
in the blue line is hemoglobin A, or normal adult hemoglobin, which initially was high because of the prior transfused blood and decreased to 0% by four months after um, gene, tran gene transfer. Um, hemoglobin F, depicted in the red line, rose substantially after gene therapy and has remained in the 25 to 28% range since month three after gene therapy. But just as important as the total amount of fetal hemoglobin is how that fetal hemoglobin is distributed. Um, we can assess this by looking at something called F cells. F cells are cells that produce fetal hemoglobin in a measurable level. And on the right graph, you can see that our patient is producing and maintaining a very high level of F cells. So this suggests that his fetal hemoglobin is distributed broadly, protecting a large proportion of cells against sickling. Finally, um, our subject thus far has uh, experienced reversal of sickle cell phenotype. Um, there has been no pain, respiratory events, or neurologic events. Um, the patient is not anemic with a normal total hemoglobin of 11 grams per deciliter at six months and laboratory evidence of much decreased hemolysis with a low reticulocyte count and LDH. There have been no transfusions required since engraftment. Um, the photos below show peripheral blood smears from our patient. Before gene therapy on the left, you can see quite a few irreversibly sickled cells, which are the small um, sickle-shaped narrow cells. Um, six months after gene therapy, there are no visible sickled cells on the peripheral blood smear. In conclusion, we've shown effective collection, gene modification, and clinical grade manufacturing of a BCL11A targeted stem cell product in three patients. Early data on engraftment in one patient demonstrates the first use of this Schmier construct vector with good short-term safety profile. Validation of BCL11A as an effective target for fetal hemoglobin induction in humans, as evidenced by high level of fetal hemoglobin per F cell and high numbers of F cells in circulation, and early mitigation of some of the cellular phenotypes of sickle cell disease.